Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. I'm Ramon Mejia, here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, author interviews. Episode number 267 of the show, we got only two reviews for you this week. Um, I tried to get into a, a number of other stories, uh, and I just I just couldn't finish them, so I can't give them all for review, so I'm not going to be uh, keep giving them any type of review, but uh, I just... These are the only two I finished, <laughs> so there you go. Uh, there are some much more interesting titles that have come up uh, and released since the last time we had the show and the podcast, and a bunch of audiobooks, which I'll talk about. But this week, I'll be reviewing uh, The Corrupted Chord, The Dungeon of Stories, book number one, and also Defines of the Fall, a little bit of adventure. So two uh, stories just for you this week. But before we do that, we're going to jump into Lit RPG News. <laughs> And in Little Pigeon News, we just have one nice, one like really good story about a Kickstarter campaign from Luke Chimilenko, who's the author of Ascend Online and a number of other books. Um, but he is doing a Kickstarter campaign for a hardcover version of, of that very popular series. Um, the, the the Kickstarter campaign was completely funded for the eight thousand over the eight thousand uh, dollars that it was set up for within I think like a day or less. Um, and so it's, it's a fully funded project. So you're not really risking anything. Um, assuming, you know, nothing terrible happens. Um, and so just go support it. If you really want to, you're going to get, uh, I think the, uh, the rewards go from, Oh, thanks to uh, here's a postcard with custom artwork on the lower tiers to, to things like, Oh, the signed version of the book, hardcover, um, posters with the original artwork, digital artwork, uh, your name and upcoming story. So all kinds of wonderful rewards for you. If you're, if you support the campaign, or if you like Luke Shimilinkona's work, uh, you have until July the 4th to, to sign up. You only got nine days left. So, um, hopefully you'll, you'll see this and you'll go support an author you enjoy. Okay. On to stuff that's out now. Um, stuff that came out since the last year on the show includes Masters of Strata, the Deepest Dungeon Book Number Two, a short story from Tao Wong called Adventures in Clothing, uh, a new side story in the Brooding Airline universe, Brooding Airline Resurrection, the second book in the Savage Domain series by uh, Luke Chimalenko and a co author, J.D. Penman, the new story, Tournament Online on Undiscovered Country, uh, the third book in the Ethria series called The Liberator, um, and oh, these pictures disappeared. That's weird. Um, Bio Dungeon Hemostasis, book number three in the Body Dungeon Core series, which is a, a collaborative project from uh, Jeff Rockenlogue and uh, Jonathan Rooks, two Dungeon Core authors. Uh, the f- 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 so book Warlords of the Circle Sea, Dragon Knight's 4X Strategy series, which is the fourth book in that series. Uh, Condition Evolution, book number five, is out. As is a new story from Arthur Stone, who does a um, kind of a connected world series of system apocalypse series, uh, RPG apocalypse world series, called Easy Meat Food Stuff Little RPG. So we'll have to see how that turns out. His writing is usually pretty entertaining, though. Um, on to new audiobooks, we have I Am Gamer, book number three by Gabriel Rathwig. We have the fourth book in the Abduction Cycle series. The ebook is also out at the same time. Um, Masters of Strata, which we already mentioned, is also out as an audiobook, as is the new script um, audiobook that we mentioned. It's a short story, so it's uh, going to be a short audiobook. Also out is Sky Realms Online, book number five, is an audiobook, and The Infinite World, book number three, which is an actually really great story. Highly recommend this one. I, I reviewed it as an ebook. Um, the story definitely returns to like the good storytelling that I enjoyed from book number one. Um, also out audiobook tournament online, which you mentioned and, uh, Faye Nexus book number one, black Dawn. So there we go. Uh, also new era online, which is the m- more popularly known as life reset series. Uh, the six, and I believe that's the final book in the series, um, is out. Also out is the second Magus book number one, uh, death for Warlock book number one, uh, curious beginnings, um, Salvos online book number, which I thought was a great story. And Tales of the North Flood, Winter's Quest, um, which is the first book. It actually doesn't say here. It could be the second book. I don't know. Um, out for you to enjoy as an audiobook. We actually have a, a ton of stuff coming out and upcoming liturgy as well. Uh, we'll have a list in the show notes if you want to go check that out. But it extends from June 29th 
uh, all the way until the end of August. And it shows all the stuff I could find that are the upcoming literary PG list, but it's a really long list, and I'm just kind of tired of reading uh, <laughs> those kind of lists. But some of the highlights, I think, include um, the Seventh Realm Part uh, 1, which will be out on June 29th. Uh, also, on July 1st, Dungeon Crawler Carl, book number four. Uh, also, the eighth book in the Rally Bender series, July the 12th. Um, Necro- Necrotic Apocalypse, book number three, which will be out on July the 14th. Let's see what else. Oh, a new uh, series in the Divine Gender Universe will be out as well on July the 28th. Lion's Lineage, book number th- one. Uh, the Good Guys, book number 12, is actually shifting dates. It was supposed to come out on June the 30th. It is now coming out on July the 30th, so be aware of that. And uh, this Guardian, book number eight, August 9th. Uh, Defiance of the Fall, book number two, August the 10th. Uh, let's see. And yeah, everything else Alex, is coming out. But, like, hey, so the list has more books. Those are just some of the highlights. Feel free to go check them on our website, libertyspodcast.com. In the uh, in the re- recommendation section, we have an updated list there going on. Okay, on to uh, our reviews for the week. Okay, first review for the week is going to be The Corrupted Core, The Dungeon of Stories, book number one, written by John Stovall. It is 394 pages, $4.98. It's available on Kindle Unlimited, and here's the author's description. The first rank, four dungeons ever born. Uh, an unusually talented party of adventurers, both in the space of terror that destroy the kingdom that came before them. Will is the newest in a long line of dungeons born into the world, and is a rank higher than any dungeon that preceded He's born along with seven other dungeons in a small area, but so many dungeons were born in one place because of a magical disaster. A disaster brought by the Voidbringers who sought to conquer the world. Now the unthinkable has happened that the Voidbringers have returned, and they have the ability to corrupt dungeons. As a powerful dungeon, Will is one of their targets. He comes under the assault by, by their minions, has to deal with the aggressive neighboring dungeons, and of course adventurers. With the aid of his dungeon fairy Amber and the adventuring party run by Gar Adamant, displaced Prince of the Kingdom the destroyed by the Voidbringers, Will must grow his dungeon to become as strong as possible as he can possibly can, grow his nearby town, defend himself from the locals, and fend off enemies surrounding him everywhere, a dungeon core story. Okay, um, this, it says it's a dungeon core story, but only about 30-ish percent of it is actually a traditional dungeon core story that has a perspective from the dungeon. The rest of the story really actually follows uh, the other named character in, in, this, in, in the novel description, the uh, Dwarven Prince. Um, and his adventure is going in and out of the dungeon, getting a crew together, um, establishing a dungeon town to to kind of recreate uh, a, a, a declining kingdom and, and help prop that up. You know, finding other adventurers and um, dealing with politics with the other nations, elves, uh, elvish factions, whatever the case is. Um, and so there's a lot of that stuff there. And that, that actually takes up the majority of the story with the ending. Um, I'll, 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 this isn't spoilery, but dealing with the other like big adversity problem with the other dungeon uh, uh which is mentioned again in the novel description so that that's pretty much what the story is i'd say again that the dungeon core portion of this is kind of the disappointing section unfortunately um not that it's poorly written not that it's a badly story, told story or that the mechanics the actual mechanics are, are fairly detailed uh and there is definitely um thought put into them um so i give the author props for that but there's nothing there that i haven't read before and that's kind of what it comes down to this is i enjoy the story um but uh the the dungeon core portion of it just wasn't particularly wasn't bad it's just i'd read all those concepts before it felt like the author is a fan of dungeon core stories and he's he's read quite a few and he kind of plucked out or was inspired by um other you know popular stories and he kind of pulled similar ideas and incorporated into his own dungeon core story so you're seeing a lot of influences from other popular series like the the dungeon who wakes up and he has a dungeon fairy next to him and he he starts expanding and some of the monster choices are like list of the revolutions um the elemental affinity sections um, and again, none of it's done badly. It's just that, oh, okay, I read that, I read that, I read that. Um, even the like the big bad, you know, uh, conflict with the next dungeon who's trying to corrupt him or take over. Like, I've read that multiple times. Um, I've read a lot of dungeon core stories too. Uh, 
Um, and so I see all those influences. And again, they're not badly done. It's just that, oh, like, nothing really special here on that front. Now, on the other front of the story, the essentially the um, fantasy uh, progression story, I mean, there's a progression of the entire, entire story, both on the Dungeon side and on the adventure side, so it is Liturgy, no questions there. Um, but this, the other point of view, from the uh, Dwarven Prince, rather, now that actually was a little more entertaining, at least until, like, the foremost list, I should say. And that's mostly because that's where you get your world building done, because that character is not restricted to the, to the dungeon. Uh, that's the character who ha has an opportunity to to have a character progression arc, because he's interacting with other other species, other characters, other uh, other adventurers other characters so there's um he gets to do that he also has um there's also opportunity in this story to do some actual world building from other point of views from other characters um a little bit of politics in the story which is always a nice little layer um and that 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 section even though um it isn't what i came for with his dungeon core story was still like fairly entertaining and that felt a little more a little more original because it, it had its own unique characters it had dialogue um and it, it kind of was able to go in its own direction up until at least the end big conflict which again was fairly predictable um again because it's pulled from um inspired inspired from other you know very popular dungeon story, core stories um, so for the most part, um, nothing really bad to say about the story. Again, solid game mechanics. Um, they are, there is definitely a, a lot of thought put into them and I can appreciate the theory system that, that the author used and, and incorporated and, and show the care, uh, the course thought processes and min maxing or at least in, 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 in developing, um, his resource system and the efficiency there and that his plan was to expand all kinds of good stuff there. Um, but again, mechanics that I, I've seen before, um, the, the, the arc was predictable because I, you know, I, I read this stuff and it could not bad. It's just nothing that really wound me. So overall, um, not a bad story. Fairly solid little bitty, uh, little bitty dungeon core story. Um, and, uh, you know, fairly entertaining. Just nothing that really wowed me. Gets a score of 7.3 out of 10, which is, again, a very a positive. It's a good score. Um, but if you've read other dungeon core stories, like, oh, this is this is going to be feel <laughs> extra familiar for the dungeon core parts. And also, the dungeon core parts um, aren't, Aren't the aren't the majority of this story, um, so just just be aware of that. Um, that's the corrupted core dungeon of stories, book number one, with a score of seven point three out of ten. And here we go. Next one is Defiance of the Fall, a little bit adventure written by AKA JF Brink. Um, it is six hundred eighty five pages, four dollars ninety nine cents. It's available on Kindle Unlimited. And here is the author's description. Zack was alone in the middle of the forest when the world changed. The whole planet was introduced to the multiverse by an unfeeling system or god, a universe where an endless number of races and civilizations fought for power and dominion. Zack finds himself stuck in the wilderness, surrounded by deadly beasts, demons, and worse. Alone, lost, and without answers, he must find the means to survive and get stronger in this new cutthroat reality. With only a hatchet for a weapon, he'll have to seek out his family before the world collapses or die trying. So there we go. The, apparently, this is also a very, uh, the author puts in the notes that this is a very popular uh, story from uh, Royal Road. So there you go. Okay. Uh, this is an action oriented RPG apocalypse serial story collected and published. Um, it is a very, the, the start is honestly a little rough, and that's one of the recurring. Um, statements in like the, some of the reviews for this is that the, the start is rough, um, but a lot it has a lot of super positive reviews, like uh, several hundred. Um, so you can't argue that I enjoyed it as well. But a lot, a lot of recurring criticisms is for, for the beginning at least. So if you have a rough time there, push past it. It does really get a lot better. Uh, the author finds his writing style fairly quickly. And there's lots of action, lots of adventure. Um, and the first half of the story really just focused on the solo adventuring of the main character as he's forced to skip the tutorial, or RPG apocalypse, and fight monsters to survive and fulfill the quest he's given by the system. So dangerous path, but very rewarding for the main character. And the second half of the story actually expands into town building, community building, waves of monsters, um, plus some world building as the main character is able to kind of leave his... Um, his starter location for other places and he gets connected with other survivors sees how the rest of the world is doing in the situations um and of course they're set up for other plot lines like him finding his family uh him finding the other members of his camping group that he was with uh, when it when all this started which is stuff i'm sure it's going to be developed well you know into the series 
Um, and on the RPG side of things, fairly decent. There's a cultivation aspect to the power growth, which some people will like, some people won't. I didn't, and uh, not bad. It's just a different different twist on RPG cultivation or to RPG progression rather. But there is very clear progression, power choices, class choices. Um, there is XP or release power gain through, through quests and killing monsters. Um, the cultivation aspect really just adds a different layer to gather power without killing monsters. Um, and it's kind of the power system set up for the magic tech that's used in the story and by the system. Um, but again, the really good power growth curve with reasonable exclamations. Uh, for systems that mimic the game stuff, you'll see things like leaderboards eventually, how the XP system works, system itself, powers, classes, all the good stuff that you like from Loot RPG exists here in the story. And it is detailed enough that I think that most people will appreciate it. Um, and it's not really that repetitive. So always good stuff here. Um, overall, again, very action focused story that a lot of people enjoyed. I'm one of them. It loses a couple points for me. It's almost great. It's just at the rough beginning, knocked it down a little bit for, for me. But overall, um, it had really nice character development. It had good world building. Um, and, you know, just be aware it is a collected serial so there's not going to be like this one cohesive arc for the entire story next year because it's multiple arcs written for a serial story that's published online and is continued to be published um and this is a collection of those stories um and, and they're published so you have two kind of big arcs in this, in this particular um book of the series um and they're they they could have been published separately and they would have been perfectly entertaining and, and fine but put together here so just be aware of of, of the structure of the story so you have a, um of reasonable expectations but overall again very action-oriented Top notch, um, and I don't doubt that it's going to get more complex and more world building as the series continues. For me, get the score seven point eight out of ten. Uh, that's a really good score. Dungeon of the sorry, Defiance of the Fall, a lit RPG adventure with the score of seven point eight out of ten. Okay, that's it. Very short episode, folks. Only had a couple of reviews again for you. Remember this week, you can actually follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, or website. Uh, you can also hear the show at Spotify, Audible, uh, or just on our website at littlebeachpodcast.com. You can find all the ways to support us and catch all the latest news and uh, the ongoing list of new releases, new audiobooks, and upcoming story, upcoming Little Beach stories we have there. We also have links in the show notes for Facebook pages where uh, you can find your favorite authors and your community members in Little Beach community can talk and chat and geek out about the stuff they love a little bit um but thanks for hanging out with me today folks and until we can hang out again remember to go read some little rpg goodbye everybody